Okay, let's get started. <laughs> My is not funny. Like, no, like, it's, it's funny, like, finally here. Shout out to everyone that was asking, where's episode one? <laughs> everyone being our, like, friends on campus. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to be like, the streets are talking. <laughs> no, but the streets will be talking, the stre- though. Like, trust. Trust. Of the streets, like, kiki king, you know. Yeah. Well, let's get into it. Yeah. Welcome to Au Noir, navigating our intersectional realities because we're intersectional what? baddies. We're black. We're queer. We're That's women. True. We're not binary. We're what else? Fly. We're, and we're, we're bad. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, we're pretty we're sympathetic. <laughs> we're like spiritual, intelligent, it's, yeah. intelligent. Yeah. We care a lot, but we're also nonchalant. Don't get it twisted. Yeah. I'm not nonchalant. I can't lie. I'm also not. I'm a Scorpio, so I'm not nonchalant. I'm Ow. very chalant. We're both chalant. <laughs> chalant I'm an Aries, yeah. but Pisces cusp. Scorp- but- <laughs> I am. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a cusp, though. Like, Shout yeah. out to that Scorpio Aries combination. Yeah. Also, if you see me on my phone out, don't mind me. Yeah. I am being a nerd. <laughs> we have a description of our podcast. And I want to make sure we don't miss anything because I really want to. You know, show y'all what we're, what we're really about. Oh, right. Because we want you guys to join us. And we're trying to build a community here. You know, it's mad embarrassing to put yourself out there on the internet. But we're yeah. doing it because we really do want to create something. Yeah. Because we don't know if we've seen something specifically like this. In a specific niche like this. Yeah. If there is, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm so sorry. We're <laughs> so not sorry. this We're not the only one. Like, like I'm not. I don't it's care just, about individuals. When I was a... <laughs> college senior when i was a high school senior four years ago i feel like i was looking at like the ivy league videos and stuff from, from like the black queen of fly perspective and i never got that specific intersection intersection and just intersection of life in general i'm like shit is different when you're at the intersection of this many marginalized identities so let's talk about it let's and talk about it. yeah first let's introduce ourselves because we no, always <laughs> We get so excited, and then it's like, does it even matter who we are? But it does. It, it does. does. You first. Okay. Madame. Ooh, what should I say? I'm like, what about my notes? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, um, I'm Tristan. I'm a senior at Stanford. We're both seniors. We're gonna talk more about it. But I'm from Dago. Hey, Dago baby, Dago baby, Dago baby. <laughs> I realize that you know, the world doesn't have as much love for San Diego as I wish. I'm actually from Chula Vista, but I say San Diego because ain't nobody, if you know Chula, eh, shout, out Chula, shout, out Chula, Chula, shout out Chula, shout out Chula, shout out Chula, Chula. Chula baddies are real. Yeah. That's the only thing that happens out there. But, um, <laughs> I'm a human biology major. I'm an art practice minor. I like doing a lot of different things. I'm really indecisive. I really like strawberries. Like, we'll get more into it. Yeah, you know? she really likes strawberries. I do. <laughs> I do. I do. We were roommates <laughs> over the summer and she was fucking shit up. Every day? Yeah. She a should. strawberry a day. Keeps and she was strawberry short cake for Halloween. I was. I keep it on theme, you know. Mm, come on. I do. Um, I am Lingabel Brempong. Hello. Hi. Um, I'm also a senior, like she said. Also a humble major. You know, that's where we really connect. Um, but I'm a theater and performance studies minor, acting concentration, so, you know, I do performance here and there, you know. Um, I'm hella spiritual, hella, like, witchy, <laughs> hella cunty body. It's true. Yeah, and that's pretty much all I'll say for now. You can figure the rest out by tuning in more. No, literally, we'll get more into, like, Subscribe. who we are as people. Mm. And we want to also, like, somehow make, like, an interactive community at some point, too. For sure. So we want to know y'all Yeah, so well. we can have people, like, you know? submit, like, topics and questions. And we'll talk, because we need to talk about it, because the state, like Jada Smith said... Let's talk about the state of the world. The, and I let's know, talk about the state of the us. economic and political state yeah, of the world literally. right now. No, but really it is like, I feel like we are born in a crazy time. I guess yeah. as is everybody, but yeah. whoa, life gets, you know, life mm-hmm. gets, life be lifing. Um, yeah. Should we talk about why we wanted to make the podcast? Yeah. They're like, ooh, what's this? Let's talk what, about it. what is this about? Let's tell y'all. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's see. So basically, I feel like as like, you know, black people, black women, and then I think like in high school, I'm sure a lot of people can relate, but we both graduated during the pandemic, so we were seniors in 2020, Mm -hmm. and I feel like, no, literally, like, and um, I think that during that time, I had the space 
Because honestly, like, I'm going to be real, like, getting into Stanford was no easy feat. Like, I really wanted to go to college for free. Um, so I was kind of on my grind in high school, and I think I didn't realize how significant it was, like, how little time I had to think about myself and who I am and, like, shit that really matters in life. And, um, you know, during the pandemic and going into college, I met so many different people. I realized so much about myself. And a big part of that was, like, coming into my queer identity, both in terms of, like, gender and sexuality. And, you know, I think, like, watching all the Stanford YouTube videos, it helped so much. It was so, you know, it was really informative, but there weren't a lot of people like me, you know, like, on internet spaces that I could learn from and kind of, like, get an idea of what to expect. So I think I've learned a lot just, like, off rip here. <laughs> yeah. Like, I really wish that there were more people talking about, like, it feels like a really niche thing, but it's not, you know, like, being in college, being queer and a person of color mm -hmm. and at, like, a PWI or, like, a very wealthy institution, so. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I have a similar story. Um, I actually didn't even realize I was queer for real until, like, my freshman year when I, like, started really exploring that. So before I got into Stanford, I got in early. I'm um, watching, like, a whole bunch of, like, the you know, black ass Stanford videos, I'm like, yes, so I'm like, and then I come here and then I start exploring my intersectional identity, I start exploring like gender and sexuality beyond the binary and I'm kind of just like, wait a minute, I was not prepared to come to a place like Stanford and go through changes like this and especially in a place that doesn't have many people that have those same intersectional identities, like, it's just, hard. it's really easy to feel lost and it, I felt like it wasn't like a, a thing that we can talk about because like it's like something like that happens behind closed doors or like it happens and then you know you come out and then you're like the like queer baddie and then like everything's good but like it's not like that i know i'm Ghanaian american my parents immigrated two years before they had me i'm from philly um and I mean, shout out to my five yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know what's coming, yeah. But, <laughs> I love philly. but yeah i feel like that process was like very hard i don't communicate with my family anymore after coming out and i just feel like there was just so many like tough situations and just tough aspects about life about like um being like a fly black queer non-binary person at stanford exploring that wanting to go the non-traditional route and not wanting to work like your stereotypical jobs like it was just so like confusing i'm like i was supposed to come here go to med school and like get it all together and Literally. i just completely pivoted my path entirely and yeah. at first i thought i was crazy but then finding people like tristan and then talking about it we're, we're both like, crazy now but yeah. <laughs> it's actually we're both crazy now yeah, but okay. just, a little bit, but. <laughs> just a little bit <laughs> but after finding people that like share those same experiences we're like wait why aren't people talking about this like this is something like yeah these voices are not being like attended to and we're in the privileged position to be able to speak about it so yeah let's talk about it let's talk about it and i feel like a big thing like when you were talking about like coming to stanford and not going a traditional path i also like i feel like for a lot of people coming from low-income backgrounds first-gen backgrounds like college is just like it really is especially in america one of the only forms of like social mobility which we can get into like you know mm. social mobility like under capitalism but i do think <laughs> it you know like college was the next step in my life where I was like okay so I'm gonna be able to be financially stable and live like a good life and have my bands up like whatever mm -hmm. but then obviously in college I you have to think about things more like I feel like the exactly. communities I got into made me engage with the world around me a lot more intentionally and now that I'm here it's like damn like I think this is a great school if you want to go a traditional path and no hate to anybody who's going a traditional path right. at all so um but I feel like in high school if you're coming from like a low-income background or if you're just like you're like I gotta make it out I gotta do this or that I, I didn't consider art school. I didn't consider a lot of things. Exactly. I was like, I'm not going to make no money, which isn't, and now I know that's not true. That's not true that <laughs> you're not, not. going to make no money. Like, I really wish if I could go back in time. But um, <laughs> but I feel like coming to Stanford and being like, oh my God, what do I want to do with my life? Which a lot of that I still feel. I still feel that mm -hmm. a lot. You um, think it would be better by <laughs> senior year senior college. Senior winter, we still winter feel camera like... setup still isn't the most sophisticated. Yeah, so. so we recorded like uh, 30 minutes and we only got 12. Um, <laughs> so there's a crazy clip in this. Like... Yeah, if there's like some yeah, editing, some um... jumping, like mind your business <laughs> no, or find me a new camera, like. No, <laughs> and 
Dude, we should start like a <laughs> Amazon wish list. No, uh, for real. Like, but we think when we were cut off, we were talking about like how hard it is to come here, think you're going the non traditional route, and then all of a sudden it's just like you come here, you find yourself, you find yourself at the intersection of all these different identities and no longer identifying identifying with that survivor mode. Um, I don't know if it got cut off, but I said I was from Philly, two on five, very young. And, yeah. <laughs> and just growing up, like, first gen, low income to immigrant parents that immigrated, like, two years before they had me, like, it was, like, it was rough being that survival mode and then thinking I'm going to go to med school and do this traditional stuff and, you know, come here and with all the pressures from, like, African families, from society in general, and then just, like, completely break that down and find myself, find my gender and sexual identities and find out that I want to go into like the entertainment industry instead of med school and stuff like that it was just it was a lot and I didn't see representation of that for real and I'm like until I met my Tristan <laughs> and then we started talking about it and then we were like wait let's record ourselves talking about it because it needs to be documented because needs there be needs done. to be a space for us to talk about this why is nobody talking about this it's true because I know there's a lot of people like us mm-hmm. for real and, like, one thing, too, we talk about a lot, or at least I think about a lot, is how, like, being a person of color coming from any type of low-income background or first-gen background, it's, like, uh, college is, in a way, like, a, a form of social mobility. Like, you know, social mm. mobility, like, we could get into that in another episode. But it's really, like, it's almost, like, a way out if you've been on, like, an education grind. So, honestly, yeah. I didn't think too much about, like, what I specifically wanted my life to look like. I was just like, oh, I just need to, like, be financially stable mm-hmm. and I'll be happy and I'll live a good life. And, like, you know, this school will get me there. Or, like, if I can go for free, then, you know, I can get to that sooner. Yeah. But then coming here, it's like, oh, my God, you get to interact with people who come from a completely different class. Even just, like, <laughs> seeing upper middle class life and then, like, you know, it goes upper middle class. And the people who are wealthy and then mm. super wealthy and then one percenters like you get to see how different of a life that you can even just in college like not having to work a job or not having to worry about you Mm. know getting your own money during school literally there's just a lot of differences i feel i became really aware of and like looking back it's like uh (laughs) in high school obviously like with my family and stuff it's like art school is not really in my mind at the time it was like oh i can't go to art school and be broke but uh, now i know that's really not true yeah <laughs> that's really not true like shout out to people that who are going to art mindset, school like capitalist yeah. mindset and it's just like now being here doing what i want to do which is ideally something in a cre- like a creative capacity um it just this is definitely a school that's great if you want like a traditional pathway or if you want to I think that elite schools are really good at making workers, <laughs> mm-hmm. like workers for, you know, systems that are considered more traditional and traditional pathways. Yeah. Shout and out to traditional don't, bodies. Shout out, shout out. If that's what you're into, like, poor, like, mm-hmm. you know, get into it. Um, but if you don't fit that mold, it's like, wait, like, what uh, am I doing here? What am I gonna, like, where? Yeah. You feel, like, lost and confused. You're just like, uh so yeah that's why i recreated on noir because we really found that this was a gap in like representation and like media podcasting like just long form videos and we just wanted to create a community of people that want to talk about issues like this that may align with one or more of our intersectional identities and we're just going to watch funny bad bitches rant so, it's true. Yeah. We're going to be ranting a lot Damn. about a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. Like, y'all going to want to tap it. No yeah, mercy on that thing. And the first thing I want to rant about? The dating scene here. <laughs> no, we need like we need to get good at editing so we can put in crazy. You know, we're going to yeah. get crazy. Y'all. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Gonna gonna get there. <laughs> yeah. But, but, yeah, I just... <sighs> dating as a queer person here at Stanford is interesting. I feel like mm, mm. I'm finding mm. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh. I think it could just be hard because obviously like how many queer people are in predominantly white spaces, nevertheless queer people of color. So it's just as a queer person, I feel like and as like a dating like both men, women, non-binary people, like 
I decided to, well, we all like had to sort of explore the whole Bay Area because, you know, there isn't that much you could get on campus. So it was really just <laughs> that big. much you could get is not funny. <laughs> <laughs> like, not yeah. like that. No. I love my no, staff of queer like, okay. bodies. <laughs> but no, true. It's just like, bodies. especially once you hit junior senior year, it's like you want to venture, you want to explore, yeah. and I feel like all of that has brought some stuff yeah yeah um uh, i think uh i feel like probably any college unless it's like a <laughs> i mean like stereotypical liberal arts schools like i know y'all got mad queer people <laughs> no for real <laughs> i know it might not be the same there but i feel like low-key probably any school like once you get into like the upperclassmen range especially when you're dating as a queer person if you're trying to date other queer people Especially queer people of color, mm. which limits your pool even more. It's mm. a very, like, particular group of people. Like, Stanford is a pretty big school, but we're not that big. Yeah. I don't necessarily think the community is, like, numbers-wise, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> that big. So, it comes to a point where it's, like, someone you know or someone your friend has talked to. Or, like, you know, I feel like there's just a lot more, like, webs of connection. Um I think probably in most schools, people can feel that. Like, by a certain time, it's like, no, nah, I got to get outside. Yeah. Like, I got to get outside the, the Stanford bubble. Yeah. Um, so that's unfortunately what I did for my first relationship. Um, I Freshman year, COVID, so not really anything. And then... I want to make sure it's running. Loki. Oh, yeah. Um, Before I start tapping sure. into the story. Make sure we're really tapping. Okay, it's going still. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Oh, we're going to be up, y'all. We're- <laughs> yeah, we're going to be up and at them, cutting, because, you know, give us give us some time, Ooh, some space to really get it together. No, you know, please. Just start. It doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I started, freshman year was calm, but sophomore year, I started dating this guy that I've been dating apps. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, I don't even count that as a real relationship because we were dating for like three months, but he was rich as hell. He bought a private plane to fly me over the Bay Area to ask me to be his girlfriend because I said that I like views on our first date. Um, drove a Hellcat, um, took me shopping will buy me like Burberry perfume. So he wasn't shit at all. Trust he wasn't shit at all. And was a big part of the realization that I am a lot queerer than I thought I was, but he has some money, okay? And, yeah, you know, shout I look out, good at gold. Shout out, shout out. And I think we gotta <laughs> talk about the <laughs> I think it's also important to mention that, like, as a person from, like, a low-income background or any type of, like, not-rich background coming to Stanford, it's, like, you have a perception of what wealth is. Mm. And obviously, like, any person who's been poor knows, like, the, the goal is, like, getting banned. Like, Literally. It's getting, I'm, like, I'm sorry, like, because I do think, like, you know, and it's something we should definitely have an episode on because it eats, but I I feel there's a reason why our generation has been so up on, like, capitalism is the devil, mm. but really, like, the main, I feel like, especially in America, way to live good is yeah. through wealth. Like, class is a huge social signifier, mm. and anytime you have... You could be adjacent to wealth. It's like shit. Like coming into this space and seeing how people have lived all their lives and for generations, not just their own life, like, oh, their parents are like that and their grandparents mm -hmm. are like that and their grandparents are like that. It's just really like, it is really real. Yeah. It's really real to want, you know, it's like, it's hard to balance. I feel like for me, it's been hard to balance wanting like to be financially free exactly, and live yeah. a good life because I feel like money is the foundation for like all those things and then also but deconstructing also, my own mm-hmm. relationship to wealth because you know like it's nice to have a rich partner like right. I don't really know that like, but like the implications yeah. of like hoarding wealth and stuff like that mm-hmm. but also the survival mode of wanting to have as much wealth as possible like it's a lot and battling that oh. dynamic is a lot Ooh. oh we're gonna um cussy cussy <laughs> okay Perfect, it's still recording. I'm going to start running again. Okay. Okay. Um, So yeah, I feel like battling the survivalist mode versus wanting to be rich and (laughs) but not wanting to contribute to the wealth gap 
mm-hmm. just hard. And just only being like the ones making it out, but then like your whole community still hasn't made it out. Exactly. Like, what? Like, it's hard. Like, what? Exactly. And battling that. Yeah. So that's the justification I'm using. If anybody asks me why I dated that man, because I did not have my head on my shoulders correctly. No, but also <laughs> no, it happens. And also, like, I feel like the. The reality of being like a young girl and the way that like a rich man is really like that's really common. So people's mamas be like, "Wait, yeah. a rich man." That's just how. Especially my mom. <laughs> no, because it really like, is like for looking real. out for your daughter in a way. Yeah. Because I do think gender is so related. Like you know, people only started marrying for love, kind of recently. Yeah. Like women have really had to like lock in in marriage in right. order to have a financial, financially stable life. Like back in the day, shotties couldn't marry for love. Like what? Plus and, he was six yeah. four and dark skin is hotter, so that'll do it too. <laughs> that'll do it. Too. That'll that'll do it. Too. Um, but yeah, that relationship was short lived. I haven't been in a relationship. I haven't been in a long term relationship ever. So shout out to the girls that relate. I can relate to you. It's hard out here, but we'll get through. Um, <laughs> and I just feel like. I was dating casually, was kind of finding a vibe, kind of not finding a vibe here and there, realized I was super queer, so I was being queer in LA, that was a vibe, we were roommates in LA last summer, (laughs) it was a good vibe, being in hella queer spaces, black queer spaces, like, black lesbian parties, like, what, they don't have this where I'm from, like, hell yeah, it was just so fun exploring, like, exploring myself and my gender and sexuality and the dating scene in that sense. And I came back here, and it's been pretty stagnant since, but <laughs> nah, we're hopefully okay. up soon. You gonna be up. You gonna be up, girl. And either way, we graduating real soon. That's <laughs> you don't have to be. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's okay. Yeah. And what's your, what's your t- t- dating? What's oh your God. comments oh on it? What's <laughs> True. Okay. Um, ooh, also, full disclosure, right now, I am in a relationship with a man, and honestly, I really love him. Like, it's They are really so good. cute. Thank you. It's My really name. healthy. <laughs> I feel like one thing I've been struggling with, I guess when we first started dating was kind of like, what does dating a man mean for my queerness? And like, you know, like I was like, damn, like, am I not valid? Like, what's tea? But I definitely have gotten to a place where I'm like, okay, like, I've liked women all my life, like, and I've liked non binary people. And honestly, it's just about vibe for me. Mm. Um, and I've been, you know, I've been on that wave my whole life. And just because I'm dating, like, I feel like I'm really coming to terms with like being queer is just being able to like be with who you want when you want, like, you know, yeah. choosing like just to. Be with who you're attracted to and who really, like... Yeah. So, you know, I'm definitely... But I also think it is important to, like... Random, you know, tangent. But <laughs> I really liked... I watched the movie Bottoms and I really liked it. But it was mad. I didn't see that. No, it was good. It was good. I it but I will say, it was kind of funny. Because on the internet, people were talking a lot. And I don't know, honestly, like... I need to be fact-checked. I don't know how much of this is true. <laughs> but I just know a lot of, like, queer women, like, specifically, I guess, like, lesbians and stuff... We're feeling kind of like, damn, like, queer shot is in the movie, but how many of them? And then it was just mm. talking about how a lot of them have dated slash date men. Um, so I think there is something to say about, like, creating space for, like, women who love women and people yeah. in, currently in queer relationships. But also, I do think it's interesting how, like, people kind of, like, pocket watch queer people. Like, I don't know, I saw, like, in that show Heartstopper, people kept asking that one main guy character, like, are you <laughs> Is that the one you made me... <laughs> <laughs> this girl guys, held guys. a gun to my head and said, watch this <laughs> now. And we, we still have to finish it. We're still going to finish it. How did you remember we're that? We were watching it last time. It. It's February. I know that we're not... <laughs> Oh, we were watching Heartstopper. If you haven't seen it, it's a really cute um, gay teen show. It's really and it's cute. really cute. It's really like, come cute. on. It is really cute. I'll give it. Like, it's really cute. cute. But, um, but in the show, people were like hounding the, the main male actor. I think the redhead. I'm so sorry. I don't know. Your, I don't remember the name. But like, oh, okay, <laughs> but yeah. just they were like, like, are you even gay? Like, da, da, da. Mm. And I feel like part of like queerness becoming more normal, too, is just not having to like I think people's sexuality should also be their business. Exactly. Like, like, it's nice to know when, like, another person is queer and, like, find that community and, it's like, see representation. But also it is... It can just... I don't know. It gets kind of sticky. It, it does. Sticky. Especially when you try to, like, police people's relationships and, like, try to, like, 
enforce their label like oh i thought you said you were a lesbian this many years ago and yeah. now you're on your dating a trans max person or something like that and it's just like my, so our label is queer queerness is a spectrum and the, the label is for the entire spectrum like all relationships amongst the queer relationships are queer because they involve queer people i'm like and you don't have to feel like you need to be in a queer relationship or that now that you have a boyfriend like you need to be like that you don't belong in queer spaces like that like i feel like i talk about like my other queer friends with boyfriends and it's just like it's just not like that like bitch i'm still queer like yeah like i still love being around my community like and i still really tap in you can still tell your mama hit me up (laughs) (laughs) no that's a grown woman like no um shout out though people who get with moms like moms be bad sometimes they are bad you know i'm dom femme so you know (laughs) (laughs) every time you're gonna find a way to drop it like y'all you're gonna uh next like game to play when you watch our next episode take a shot every time that your says and i'm a dom femme take a time Take, take, <laughs> a take a shot every time Tristan tap Tristan tries to she can't out even say it. she can't even say it. Oh who's a real dog fam? It's me. It's me not playing. <laughs> <laughs> Take a shot every single time Tristan tries to out Dom Femme me because she does every I single know, interaction. I'm just naturally like this. Like, I'd be like, let me get I it for you because you know, like... I, I have hype. No, oh, no, no. Hype? Oh, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. Um, for, for, uh, for context, I'm five feet tall and, and I'm proud of you. And uh, you know, height has nothing. <laughs> and, uh, babe, I'm watching you jump for a I'm like, I, let me get it for you. I can get it though. <laughs> I can get it though. Like, <laughs> when I like try to open doors when we're going yeah. somewhere, she's like, let me hold it. Yeah. Oh, but I feel like everybody is less. You know, I was just say about like chivalry should be live for all my girlfriends, like all my homies. Like, for what? Sure, I gotta know. do it for them. I gotta do it. I'm dead. Okay. <laughs> okay, your daddy. Your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry to her boyfriend. I'm dead. Oh, but you know, I love. Oh, no. oh you said the name. Oh, bleep. When I. <laughs> oh, yo, bleep, 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 bleep. But you know. Um, but yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> I can. This is a, a conversation every time, and it's funny because to be honest, like to be real. I really, I, as much as I wish I could be a Dom fan, like, that's just not me, like, I am a Switch. But y'all like, gonna say you're know. a Switch. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'm Switch too, but I just really, really rep the Dom fam energy, because I feel Real. like I'm perceived as a Dom fam when I go out, being like a tall, uh, yeah, fan baddie with a raspy voice, they'd be like, ooh, who's this Dom fan baddie? I'm like, whoa. They do. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I want to be a little spoon too. Five feet, and I'm perceived <laughs> as a bottom, which low-key I am in some ways. Like, <laughs> And that's okay, shout out bottoms. <laughs> shout out. That's okay. <laughs> and I didn't see like, that movie, you see? Know what? Some people need to do, you know. See, I didn't see that movie, because, you know, I'm not a bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, 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 bye. There are mass lesbians in that. There are. Oh, are there really? Oh, now you're excited. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, you want to watch it. Like I'm dead. I'm actually dead. <laughs> But um This is all jokes. It's all jokes. All jokes. It's all love. Yeah. Big love. <laughs> Out of all people. Of all. Everything. About. Brianna, that one clip. I love that. I love that. <laughs> Like, shut up. Like, she was really doing we her have best. To edit that yeah. she was so funny. <laughs> and he designed some boxer briefs that both men and women and non binary people of all um, gender appropriations and p- the pronouns. <laughs> No, she like, really did. Like, you know, she was trying to hold it down, and I respect right, that. Right, shout out. You know, because she was trying to be inclusive, but. <laughs> like the new pronouns because you know we're like no, inclusive i feel so bad because i'd be fucking up i'm like oh my god i gotta lock in i gotta give me two i know days. i need to like, study I gotta lock no in. for real let me study yeah. i got you man 
Yeah. Anyway, we were talking about your dating. Oh, my bad. Tangent. Yeah, no, we went on. <laughs> but basically, long story short, honestly, coming into college, I was in a relationship for like two years. Um, womp, like that was a long time. <laughs> womp. But I honestly, like, you know, I was like, I think either 18 or 19. Ooh. It's time for us to start. Commercial break. Commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> we should do that. We should edit something funny. We should. <laughs> okay. Okay. And we're back. Come on, come on, come on. And we're back. <laughs> but you know, I was I was 18, 19 getting so I was I feel like I was really young. I feel like I've grown a lot since then. I think um you know, shout out that person was like definitely a good learning experience. I think I learned a lot about myself and like what I want in a relationship. Um, you know, about how compatibility plays a role. Like I think it was a good you know, the beginning was, <laughs> it was definitely, like, it became, you know, yeah. if you're in college, you know, maybe, you know. Yeah. But it was, you know, shout out, um, it was cool, and then I was single for, like, a year or so mm-hmm. afterwards, and, um... <laughs> And here you are, yeah, and you're relationship right. baddie. Okay, <laughs> okay. This happens every time. Like y'all, like you get it. Just the wife and material like, for oh, real. <laughs> One of my um, best friends from home likes to joke that people just be trying to wipe me up. But like, look at <laughs> they me. do. No, no, no. <laughs> I feel like just generally when I talk to people, or I guess people, I feel like people are attract are generally mm. more like relationship geared. Which yeah. hasn't always been what I want. Like, honestly, when I just be trying to, like, I was not trying to get into a relationship. No, you were dodging. You were like, <laughs> but, like, I really you were. were. <laughs> I was like, whoop, whoop. You yeah, really I were. really, I really, this is not. Please. And I'm, I'm very happy now. Poor. Like, poor. It was meant Shut to happen. Out. But um, I really wasn't trying to be in anything serious. And at times, I was like, damn, I'm, like, I'm just trying to have a casual good time. Yeah. But I feel like my time being single, like, I'm... One thing I learned about myself in college is that when it comes to sex, like, I really am not a big fan of hookups and stuff. Mm. Like, I really tried, like, shout out people who, you know, because I really wanted that life. But I just do, like, sex more when I have, like, an emotional connection with someone. Mm. So I would say generally, like, I don't like talking to too many people. Like, I love, like, shout out shawty who can hold down a roster. Because <laughs> honestly, like, <laughs> I I, after two, after two, it's like, hard, I've got to lock it out. Like, it's too much. <laughs> like, I, get, I get stressed out. But... I just had a fun time exploring. And I think yeah. the on campus, like, we're talking about being a senior. Um, It's just kind of like, it's just kind of like, you know, like, so I was, um, shout um, out Cupertino. <laughs> <laughs> shout out other areas. Shout um, out, no, for yeah. real. Because shout out San Jose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, because yeah, it, it, it gets hard out here. But it does. we're on the come up, you know, and we can give you more juicy stories about dating at stanford true. the more we go on you know tune in subscribe to true, youtube follow true, us on insta true, true, true. follow us on tiktok you know stay tuned YouTube shorts, no. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry like we're trying Don't to get on everything we're trying to... <laughs> no but we will post we will, though. we will we will though we will we'll will. post we'll post reels for the baddies you know because some people ig baddies true yeah you know um, we can post it on Pinterest. <laughs> the Pinterest baddies. <laughs> shout out to the shout out to the Pinterest baddies. It's true. Pinterest is one of like I feel like the most peaceful, beautiful mm. vibe media spaces. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Yeah, but what's not a peaceful vibe? <laughs> I'm scared. I don't know what you were saying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So that connection Bye. with no, you ain't being that. black and queer. Wait, did I start another timer? I didn't. <laughs> Wait. Uh, Give us a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is what it's like. Like, you know, we're just on like that mode. Okay, okay. We got like uh, six more minutes. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Four. Yeah. Um, yeah. The thing that's not too glitz and glam is being black and queer at a predominantly white institution, especially an elite institution like Stanford. Yeah. I'm sure many people can relate to feeling othered in these yeah. sort of spaces. And yeah, we just need to talk about it and bring it to the forefront because yeah. like you see, especially decision time coming up, I feel like a lot of people are going to watch YouTube videos of like yeah. perspectives that don't really reflect their identities. Yeah. So, if you, you know, you're thinking about a school like Stanford, um, What's the black queer experience? Let's tell you. Let's tell you. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about it. it. And this is only our experience, so you For know, sure. other people might not like feel the same way. Mm-hmm. But I would say any PWI, if you're a queer player, 
person of color. I think the interesting thing is Stanford, is it like, I think generally here the culture is to try really hard to be good in some ways. I guess like, mm. I feel like woke is like an outdated word. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I feel like, like old saying that. But, but I feel like yeah. the vibe is to be like, as woke as possible in some ways like just make sure that you're like treating people with respect and Mm. saying the right thing and like you know not being a bigot but i do think in a lot of ways like and you know i think people are starting to talk about this more in general that like elite institutions there's a lot of talk about like decolonialize and you know Mm. all these things but actually in practice when you think about the day-to-day it's like, wait, like, I feel like there's a lot of talk. It's like, you know, it's like diversity brochures. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I you ain't like, with that analogy, literally, though. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> like, I feel like it's very, like, you know, the um, the rhetoric and, like, yeah. the vibe is a certain way, the way that they'll talk about it. And then the experience is, like, mm-hmm. you know, and I think, like, the spaces where, like, made by queer people and, like, run, like, where there's queer people of color, they really do try. And it's, like, definitely not for lack of trying. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of really good things, but also, mm-hmm. like, generally... Mm-hmm. It's generally <laughs> just, like, walking into a lecture and being one of, like, three black people, probably the only black queer person. Especially for human biology? Uh, uh, especially for human, <laughs> biology. human biology. Having people try to talk over you and think that what you're saying is not, like, right, or and just... even when we're talking about... I feel like at Home Bio, we do mad shit about, like, socioeconomic reality we do so much work on social that social determinants of health and we'll be talking about like low-income communities black me it's like in every single <laughs> and they'll still think they have a every voice single measure black people and especially indigenous people as well yeah you know have some of the worst outcomes the worst experiences and you'll be trying to talk about it and they're like uh actually i think like what i know it's <laughs> like, just like uh, that privileged <laughs> ass mindset like sometimes when they speak you're just like wow like you really don't know Jack Psh, Mup. I don't know if I can curse. So <laughs> it's too late for me. Oh, um <laughs> But yeah, it's just like it's hard and I feel like I grew up around a lot of like um como se dice <laughs> oh, <laughs> Hello. No, um, I don't speak like so. <laughs> I grew up like lower class and I grew up around white people but I grew up around lower class white people and like immigrant people in my like immediate neighborhood and so like these are the people that are like you know sagging their pants saying the n-word listening to P&B like <laughs> black set down <laughs> like <laughs> for no reason so growing up around that and then I went to predominantly black middle school and then a very 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 like diverse um high school and I thought I knew what like growing up as an underprivileged person was like until I came here and was exposed to this type of privilege and like experiencing like the white people that like have like lake houses and like have like Porsches around here like (laughs) I know like literally and I'm just like somebody driving a crazy car recently I was mm -hmm, like damn me too I think I saw Uh, a Corvette (laughs) Corvette Corvette (laughs) (laughs) Jay like hey Um, yeah yeah, and it's just uh, so disorienting you're just like I thought I I could say I grew up around white people but then I came and saw and met like white people like trademark yeah I can't lie I didn't even really grow up around like my community is mainly I would say we had a good mix like it was giving like middle class I think I was more low you know economically (laughs) in my neighborhood and um shout out like (laughs) (laughs) but my community was mainly like Filipino and Mexican so definitely like people of color my school got title one funds which just means that like if you have a certain amount of low-income students, you get funding from the government. Oh, so we definitely had, like, you know, a good mix going on. And white people, white students were the minority to the point where I remember, this shit was so funny, <laughs> but in middle school, there was this white girl, I'm not going to name her, but I remember her name. <laughs> there was this white girl who was trying to, honestly, like, we just happened to sit by next to each other on the bus that day. And I don't know why, on the walk home, she was trying to tell me, she was like, yeah, like, actually being white out here is, like, really hard. <laughs> No, because I can't. <laughs> I can't lie, bruh. In my neighborhood, in my neighborhood, if you're white, like, 
I, white people get clown. Like, I'm sorry. Like, like, it's just more, not even like that. Like, but it's but just like, more, no, like, yeah, that, cause like, I went to yeah. a predominantly black middle school and that's how it was too for like the white kids. Yes, like, they would get you know, clown hella, yeah. hella. It was, and but she was then like, they tried to wanna... use it to oppre- really? oppression Olympics. And she was like, yeah, my family is moving to like Coronado, which is like, for reference, like a, a ridge beach town slash island in San Diego. So I was like, um, okay, girl, like, what, uh, okay. So, Good for you, I guess. <laughs> you know, oh, fleeing oppression, I guess. I like, girl, bye. Bye. She's not funny. Okay, cool. Let me. But yeah. yeah. That should have me dead. But I just remember, like, that I, I've definitely never been this close to privilege when it comes to mm. generational wealth. Um, the type of money that, you know, we'd be learning about. Like, I remember AP Gov, it was like, yeah, like, the top 1% owns, like, the 90%. And it's like, haha, like, that's fucking crazy. Like, what? And then you're here, and it's like, oh, like, oh. Literally. Oh, then you're sitting across the room. her birthday. I actually have to bleep that out. We're gonna- <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, we're, we're so gonna, gonna get sued. <laughs> I'm gonna bleep it out. I'm gonna bleep it out. Yeah, it's okay. We'll I'm gonna get out. sued, so I'm not gonna <laughs> say it. <laughs> I'm gonna bleep it out. You know, they're so mad. Um, and it's not like, ooh. I was gonna, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just it was such a culture shock coming here. I feel like now, so especially sophomore year after like pandemic restrictions kind of lifted and everybody came back to campus, and I really met all the white people and had like really white roommates and like oh shut up. I'm sorry. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. <laughs> No, and it's not like I She's definitely don't hate. You know, I'm no. I'm no, 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 no. We don't hate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, but really, it's not like that. But it's more like you know, being a person of color, growing up around people of color, and a lot of the way that white people, very wealthy white people, treat people of color. Yeah, the so way other. It, it's not the best vibe, really. I felt like um, other. They were best friends too, so I just felt mm. I'd be like, oh, okay. But yeah, they were cool. It was just like I wasn't really. I was really lacking black community and I was really lacking black queer community. So then that's when I um, like crossed, became an AKA. That's when, um, shout you know, shout out. out. Yeah, shout, shout out. 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 Um, and we can talk about the black queer experience in D9 if we really want to because you I have should. so much to say about that. I have so much to say about that. Anyway, you got should. sidetracked. <laughs> That'll be an episode, trust, because I have so yes. much to say. I'm getting fun. And I'm going to be silent so I don't get a, you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm going to be silent. But that's why I crossed AKA. I became an RA for the black door in my junior year. Like, I just completely went into, like, black queer spaces. I was like, mm. So after, like, junior, senior year, really getting in those spaces and meeting those people, I did feel, like, home and community. And I, and I really appreciate that because I know it can be really hard for like a lot of people at PWIs to find that so yeah. and just in general being here at Stanford like having the privilege of going to an elite school privilege of like you know per- performing well here and stuff like that like it's also something that we want to acknowledge too because to sit here and be like we're gonna sell that we're not gonna acknowledge yeah. our privilege at all like that's also not what we're here to do because we know how annoying that is to have that done to us like and you know we need some nuance like yeah. shit is real and we need to talk about it no, it's mm. super true. It's definitely weird. I think the the weirdest thing for me coming here has been like, when I applied to college, I applied to like uh, I think like two CSUs and then a bunch of UCs and then Stanford. I wouldn't even look at the East Coast because I was like, should I like the sun? I don't like snow. <laughs> like I wasn't. I was just not on that wave. No, um, so because you would have the snow. I'm not. I'm from San Diego. Like, come on, let's study San Diego. Like, <laughs> the snow is not. I'm not really about that. But um, but yeah, like Stanford was my like long shot school, mm. and I really just thought I was gonna be at a UC and stuff. And then coming here, it, it's not what I anticipated. I'm really thankful. Um, but it's just really been crazy in the ways that it's already changed my life. Like, it's crazy how it's such a status thing. Like, literally, when I was apartment hunting in New York, when I had an internship. When I would tell people, when, I, when I'd when i apply for an apartment or if I wanted an apartment, at first it'd be like, oh, you're mad young, you're, uh, you know, like, you're a black girl, like, well, whatever. Mm. And then I'd be like, oh, I'm a Stanford student. All of a sudden, Ooh. different attitude, like, hella different attitude. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so I just feel like, you know, like, it's already changed my life in a lot of ways. Mm. And, like, I saw some crazy article about how, like, one of the craziest 
like college can't necessarily change it's the best chance you have at changing your class but it like fucking like tenfold when you're at an elite institution because of the networks you're making the people you know Mm -hmm. so it's definitely like I'm not trying to negate the fact that this is a crazy place to go. Yeah. Like, um, <laughs> I, I had a time, yeah. the connections I made have been amazing, and it literally took me from lower class to upper class, hopefully. And- <laughs> <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> no. In four years, and I needed, me and my family needed that bad. Stanford is my meal ticket. So there's definitely, like, a lot of privilege I have going here, and, yeah, it's just it's definitely something to acknowledge, too, because I think... It would have, the reason why I, why I didn't choose, I didn't choose Stanford because I got in early, so I was like, well, I'm going here. Same. <laughs> but I also got to like USC, but I was like, I'm going to Stanford. But the reason why I really knew I wanted to, wanted to go to Stanford was just like, knowing like, how necessary that social mobility is, and how a lot of PWIs that don't have like that elitist, like, capital, can sort of fall short at helping like, People like people of, like fly people mm-hmm. of color so it was just like and flies first yeah general. first general income and that's why i couldn't even look at hbcus which is so sad like it's so fucking evil they're not federally funded so and like african americans are disproportionately lower income yet we somehow are going to come up with this money to go to hbcus like it's just the system is rigged and it's just like yeah like a lot of all of those factors coming together led me to stanford mm. and it was the best decision I could have ever made for myself in these circumstances in this lifetime, but that definitely comes with some, like, <laughs> hardships Not specific, like, troll, troll. Right, in this lifetime specifically, because in, in a different lifetime, I would live in the Caribbean island and just, like, be one with the sun oh. and the sand. Literally, I think, mm. I feel like such a common thing I'd be hearing among people my age is like, oh, but, like, alternatively, I could become a farmer. <laughs> so like, some, you know, somewhere, it. like, I do... We're going to get into this more, but talking about, like, living within... I feel like we are... Honestly, I'm trying to read more about it because I don't know as much as I'd like to in terms of, like, theoretical knowledge. Mm. But, you know, living in, like, pretty much late-stage capitalist society as, like, a young person. And it was just crazy growing up seeing this stuff about, like, millennials not being able to buy houses and shit. And then now, yeah. like, some of, some of my jobs, like, I have millennial co-workers, and they're like, haha, I'll never be able to buy a house, ever. That's not right. right like, like, that is not right. Like, hello? that shit's low-key not funny. Right, <laughs> like, 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 wait. And the then fuck? also knowing it's this, it's low-key the same situation for me, but low-key worse. And then I have a little brother. It's like, what's it going to be like for him? Right. So I really feel like, you know, I'm really thankful for Stanford. And I think it's made me think a lot about, <sighs> it's really hard to separate, like, the individual, you know, life I have in terms of thinking about me and my family and, you know, like, what the future is going to look like for us. But then mm. also thinking about, oh, my God, me is, like, a citizen of the world. Not like, <laughs> but me is, like, a yeah. person, part of a larger community with a larger responsibility yeah. towards, like, other people, other human beings. Um, I think, especially at Stanford, I will say I think, like, so thankful, but also I do... You know, like, colleges are institutions. They run kind of like businesses, and I do mm-hmm. feel like they... One of their best functions is, like, producing laborers, workers, especially, yeah. I think, ex- like, ooh, being at Stanford, this could be a whole other episode, but, mm-hmm. like, and we'll be. talking to, no, and we'll be, <laughs> but talking to mad, like, fly students, most of our friends, honestly, mm-hmm. kind of all of our friends honestly, are yeah. fly. <laughs> like, we're all <laughs> they are all fly. like, all of our friends are, you know, from the same vibe, cool. and it's just, like, for a lot of people, like, it's not, and if you've never experienced true poverty, like, I don't know, like, what to tell you like read read about learn i don't know because Literally. like you, if you've never experienced it you don't know what it means to, like get out of that and how criti- that becomes like everything about life mm-hmm. so i know a lot of people here who are chasing that back because like they got family to take care of they got their selves you know to take care of right. but it's also like in a way the university puts low-income students at a place where like oh you can like go and then immediately make like 200k as a software engineer um and i think it helps funnel people away from these communities from jobs where they'd actually be able to contribute directly back into their community yeah. you know it creates a system where like oh to get out you kind of have to literally get out like you have yeah. to like be separated yeah it's hard. and especially as a queer person of color it's like oh my god 
all the ways that your identities intersect it's so like mm-hmm. the system is definitely not like your friend it but it's also like you gotta you. take care of yourself and it's hard mm. in this world you know literally yeah. <sighs> we're gonna talk about all of that yeah. and more in another episode specifically if y'all want that but yeah i just feel like yeah. <laughs> Man, like, I feel like I'm always learning some new way in which black, queer, trans, like, just any other marginalized identity you can think of, indigenous, like, people were oppressed and are (laughs) oppressed. It's just, I'm always learning about some different form of oppression, but... Mm -hmm. It's hard, but we're gonna find. We're also gonna find joy in it. It's true. That's <laughs> you're gonna be with us as we try our best to like. A big part of college too has been figuring out how to not get weighed down by all this. Mm-hmm. And you know, like we deserve to be joyful and yeah. to feel free and live. Like I just know a lot of people who live with a lot of like. I don't know if ignorance is like the right word. Like ignorance is bliss, but just not Maybe. a lot of weight. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a lot of people who really don't be thinking about a lot of this just because they don't necessarily they have, have to. to. Um, but we want to talk about it while maintaining that, like, you can still be happy and you can do things that are good for yourself. Like, I think there is a way to balance things, mm-hmm. and we're still learning it. But honestly, I think we've been eating so far. Yeah, right. I just need to, you know, get a job. <laughs> we'll talk about that too. We'll, we'll talk, talk about, about that too. Because we'll everybody's been asking us, talk about some. What's what your are plan? you doing next year? Oh, do you know where you're gonna live? It's literally like the pro- like the question I get most Same. ever since this year started. And it's gonna get worse next quarter as we yeah. graduate. And I'm just like, I don't know. I do not know. It's and tough, bro. I used to be like, ha ha, the job market, like LMAO, like what is bad, bro? Like job market. Mm-hmm. The job market's bad. There's nothing out <laughs> it's there. It's bad, like. <laughs> and then I got relatives yeah. calling me that I haven't spoken to in years, talking about them. Oh, like, what are you doing? Are you going to med school? Like, I cut you all off. Um, for context, um, shout out to my black queer people that are not in contact with their families after coming out to them. I'm not in contact with my Ghanaian family after coming out to my mom and I haven't come out to the rest of my family but they'll probably see some of this eventually <laughs> and I don't care um and it's just like cutting them off but still them thinking that they have a role in your life and to enforce traditions in your life I'm like no I'm like I want to be free I want to be an actor there could be a whole other episode right and it will be <laughs> we always take a shot how many times we <laughs> say it could be a whole other episode no, but this is just you know a taste we're giving y'all okay let me do one more. We're gonna do one more, you know, you know. Commercial break. Um, we have a lot of um, ideas, as you can tell, too. for episodes. Too. And you can also let us know what y'all want to see because this is really like a community. We're fostering a community mm-hmm. of unheard, un- accounted for voices in mainstream media. And yeah, if we're not gonna do it, who will? It's true. It's true. So yeah, stick around, follow us, hang out. You know, we have a lot in store, and yeah, I don't know if there's anything else that needs to be said. Or... You know, just we're excited, and you know, we're going to be posting hella, so. Yeah. And also, I mean, side note, in the future we'll make videos more about like what we do on a personal level at Stanford, and like, I do a lot of creative stuff, so I'd love to share some of the things I do. Like, I've been learning how to metal work. And I want to make videos about that and like rings I've been making and stuff. So like stay tuned mm-hmm. and let's be acting. Like, yeah, and I'm an actor. I'm in Stanford Black Stage. So I could share like clips or just like talking about, you know, how being a black actor, a black queer actor here and navigating the scene as a black queer actor because <laughs> that's a whole other story about how black queer people are left out of Stanford spaces. Anyway. Um, and media representation. Yeah, and media and representation. Large, yeah, yeah, for sure. And so, yeah, I work a lot of, I work with a lot of stuff in that realm. But I'm also a concentration. Um, my concentration is in neurobiology and psychosociology. Hey. I am a homo body. <laughs> I am a homo hey, no, hey, no, <laughs> Yeah. So I feel like yeah. I also have a lot to like share and talk about with like. A lot of like abstract like psychological i'm also very philosophical too i've taken philosophy classes and i'm very spiritual i you know i do tarot readings i can read your chart 
don't send it in right now. Right, don't send it in though. Because I know nothing about that for real. <laughs> no, but like, that's my labor. Like, you know, I know. I'm I like, honey. Maybe like every now and then. <laughs> yeah. Whatever she feels like. Right, right. protect her peace. <laughs> right. But yeah, there's just so many different weird ass realms that we're in that all just kind of mesh together yes. to something beautiful. Same. I'm also home bio and my concentration is designing health solutions for marginalized communities. Yes. Mm. So I feel like also I love to talk. I've taken so many femgen classes and so many social classes like I would love to talk about any of these things with y'all. Yeah, cuz I feel like yeah. a lot of times like bl- like black geared entertainment like like is it allowed the space to be to have like discussions like that like I discussions know. about like more abstract philosophical or like theories or like like knowledge or like stuff we learn like in our classes That'd be so and fun. It's, just like have like a, a rant session how should we learn like, yeah we are nerds, at the end of the we day. Are like, nerds I and i just feel like <laughs> and we could talk about it in ways that are like black that entertain black people because yes. I know I'd be bored as hell in class and I'm like no literally me. I, like we could talk about it like for real for real and I feel yeah, like yeah. it would be such a great way for like people to to you learn know, to learn, like, tap to learn together right one cool. of the most annoying things oh, I'm sorry no 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 okay, okay. I didn't know because I, I didn't know what I was saying so <laughs> no you're <laughs> <laughs> you know we're just gonna sing yeah, like no. we're like this but I just say one of the most annoying things to me about college has been learning that like there's so much information and knowledge out there and so much of it, you need a fucking college email to access. Like, so many publications Literally. and articles, if you want to learn about something, you have to have a college email. Like, why can't just anybody read that? Like, what Literally. if they wanted to learn about some, like, random cool stuff? Like, right. so I just, like, low-key, we could even take crazy, interesting, because we'd be having to read a lot of academic papers. Yeah. As about, you know, like, there's a lot of interesting stuff that yeah. comes out. And we could... So we can do it all. Right. We, we could put it, it in <laughs> cunty terms for, you know, the girls. It's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and I feel like we're also going to be hella funny. We also have, you know, stories to tell. Yeah, we, do, we, we be, do. you know, shaking ass on highlights on the weekend, so we could tell y'all some little tea, too, because... Yeah. I know I have a lot, because I need to sit the hell down. <laughs> I'm more of a, a homebody, but I do yeah, get out Tristan on the Yeah, Tristan is a little more of a homebody. I am. I love a sh- uh, grandma activities. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, do. I do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I am a little bit of a street rat. <laughs> No, you, you don't I do be outside. Man, I like going outside with you. <laughs> no, I be pretty outside. <laughs> you do. <laughs> when I go out with you, I'm like, I'm outside. <laughs> you know, like, I gotta be outside. <laughs> so we'll get those stories too. It'll be fun. And we'll just also talk about like, you know, pop culture. You know, there's a hella funny shit we can talk about too. And we will talk about because yeah. we're funny bitches. It's true. We're gonna make a lot of, a lot of episodes. A so lot stay of episodes, tuned. Anything at all that we just named. It's true. Yeah, so stick around for the ride. And we love y'all. Love yeah, thank you for watching. Come get lost with us and follow us on Instagram, TikTok, mm-hmm. and subscribe to our YouTube. It's true. Au revoir, podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Toodles. Bye.